Okay, we're back. While we were off camera, we decided that the decals looked a little nicer on the lichen green disc. So when we, um, I had showed them being put on the white, but they look a lot nicer there. And one thing I wanted to mention that I hadn't mentioned was make sure you cut around as close as you can on the decal. You don't have to cut in between leaves or anything like that. Just get a close, clean cut. All right, so. Our dots have been drying and we have the clear, um, this is the fire scale decoration, the clear liquid is drying. So we are going to go ahead and get started and let's, let's go ahead and start with this. This is, we're going to just fire this to maturity and we're going to dip it in the Nile green transparent. And what's going to happen here is that the area that is exposed, the exposed copper, is going to get fire scale on it, which is going to make a ni nice dark brown. And then this other area that has the liquid enamel is going to be affected by the Nile green transparent, which is like a beautiful celadon color. So let's go ahead and just fire this. There's still a little moisture in the liquid enamel, so I just want to fire gently. Oh, that looks great. Oh, I love the way that looks. Okay. Okay, I can't wait to see that one when it's uh, cool. Now, when you have a piece that's already uh, been fired and you know it's a pre-fired enamel piece, you wanna heat it up very gently because you don't want the piece to experience thermal shock that would cause the enamel to crack off or pop off. So we are going to take just a little bit longer to fire this than normal. I'm gonna hold the piece out further in the flame, let it gently warm up. We wanna let that water evaporate too because that can pop off those uh, liquid uh, enamel dots on there. So we wanna be just gentle with our firing. So far, everything's intact in the front. Okay, it's looking good, nothing's popped off. I think we're safe. Direct the flame to the back. The area that the flame is touching can tend to get dark, so you wanna focus that towards the back of the piece. Okay, now let me talk to you to the, uh, about this for a little bit. This is the decal piece, and if we overfire this, um, well, we're not going to overfire it on the first firing. What I want to do is just fire this to the point where it looks just hot enough that if I dip it in the clear enamel, it's going to have a light coating of enamel on that. But when you're setting it in, in your bezel, it's going to get a lot more heat. So what happens when um, the piece is, is fired a little bit long for the decals that the, the image becomes more diffuse. So what I'm gonna do to try to counteract that is to shorten uh, the firing time. So what I would normally do with this piece, I would normally heat it up gently, uh, see it start to glow, dip it into the uh, clear enamel to give a protective coating of glass on top, and then I would uh, heat it to maturity. But what I'm gonna do is not heat it to maturity on this one because I'm going to allow it to happen when I'm uh, firing it in the next stage when we're putting it in the bezel. Okay, when we're bezel setting it. Okay. So we're gonna gently warm this piece. 
because it's pre-fired. And we're just uh, looking for the enamel to start to darken. One thing, this might be a nice time to tell you about lighting conditions in your studio. I always fire, in my studio I fire with the dim light, um, you know, with the lights off mostly, um, or just dim lighting. Natural lighting is your worst enemy. You don't want to fire with natural lighting. It's going to make it very difficult for you to see the flame. I'm going to move this down a little bit. So have dim lighting in the studio, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to be able to see your flame and where the sweet spot is. Just pulling that down, okay. Okay, I just want to get this hot enough for me to be able to remove it from the mandrel. I don't want to fire the whole thing to maturity. Here we go. Okay, we're down to our last little guy here, and this is the one that's going to get the controlled over firing so that we can uh, bring up some copper oxide bubbles to the surface. That's a really neat technique, and we're going to put some millefiori on top of this. So this one, after we get through the initial pre-firing and the worming stage, we're going to really overfire it a little bit. I'm going to start applying uh, the Millefiori here with tweezers. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, so let's just kind of melt these guys in. We're going to really heat this thing up. We're going to pray for the copper oxide bubbles to surface. Let's see how we're doing here. I'm just twisting the mandrel. I'm trying to move this down the end of the mandrel a little bit. Use the B-point station. Some of the uh, copper oxides are going to also surface uh, when we set this in a bezel. Take this off the mandrel. And that's it for the enameling part. So now we're going to move on to the construction of the bezel.